Hey everybody, Wolf Lord Row here. Before I begin today, a big thank you to Lester for the virtual gift voucher. Thank you very much for the support, my friend. I really appreciate it. Thank you. But on to today. And boy, do we have an interesting one. Because today we are discussing the scattering of the Primarchs and the possibility that the truth has finally been revealed. Spoiler warning to begin, we are going to be discussing lore from across the Horus Heresy, and in particular from the novels Saturnine and Valdor, so you have been warned. As always, I really recommend you read the stories for yourself first, as that's the best way to enjoy the lore for yourself. Not only that, we help to support the Great Games Workshop and Black Library, because without them, we don't have this amazing lore to talk about. I'll put a link to the novels in the description as always. But with that said, let's just jump straight in. So for many years now, the established lore on the scattering of the Primarchs was that the Chaos Gods, unable to destroy them, spirited them away from the Emperor and the Imperial Dungeon on Terra. Using a warp storm, they scattered them across the galaxy. Despite the setback, the Emperor was able to sense that his sons still lived, and so the Great Crusade became not only a conquest of the stars, but a reunion for father and sons. And this was about as much information as we were ever really given. Until, that is, the Black Library Heresy series begun. And the subtle teases began. The questions put out there. Did the Emperor allow the scattering? Did he plan it? And of course, it's always left down to just whether you believe it or not. Your own personal interpretation. For the loyalists out there, the lies of demons. For the heretics, the truth of the tyrant emperor revealed. In the novel False Gods, Horus, during a vision from the forces of chaos, witnesses the scattering brought on by the ruinous powers, cementing his belief that they were indeed created with the essence of the warp. And this is then further expanded upon in the novel The First Heretic, where the word bearers led by Argel Tau travel back in time with the aid of Ingefell the Ascended, the Demon Prince, to the heart of the Imperial Dungeon and the Primarch Project itself. Whereupon, egged on by Ingefell's words, they sabotage the Gellerfield protecting the Primarchs in their incubators, immediately allowing the warp storm of the Chaos Gods to steal away the newborn Primarchs. And as always, it's pretty ambiguous if this is actual events or some form of manipulated vision. However, it again cements the established law that it was the Chaos Gods who stole away the Primarchs. Then, for the first time ever, the novel Valdor gives us a perspective not tainted by demons' influence, as Valdor recounts the immediate aftermath of the scattering. I have often speculated on whether things would have been different had I been closer. I believe Malkador feels the same way, and it is a source of some guilt for both of us that we were not there. However, the Emperor was at the very heart of it, and if he was unable to intervene, then I must believe that no one could have had the power to prevent what happened. We acted as swiftly as we could. We were like a storm breaking. I summoned all that I could of the Legio, and we travelled to the Forbidden Centre. All thoughts of secrecy were gone. In that instant, we tore the skies apart to reach our destination. Malkador came with us, as did Astarte. I can still remember my desperation to be faster. I believe I came as close as I will ever come to knowing fear in those moments. Not for myself, 
but for something far greater. Man, what a powerful passage that is. The closest Valdor has ever known to fear. And you have to wonder, would things have been any different were Valdor and Malkador present? I don't see how, but it's interesting to speculate. Malkador is a pretty powerful psychic himself, after all. Could he perhaps have aided the Emperor? But Valdor continues on, describing the sheer destruction. Fire ablaze, smoke everywhere, the walls and roof are wrecked. Dead bodies are laying all over, with no obvious sign of wounds, leaving Valdor to speculate how they could have possibly died. The only thing keeping the structure intact is the power of the Emperor. Valdor can feel his presence everywhere, holding the walls and roof in place to give the survivors a chance to salvage what they can. And as Melkador and Valdor scour the ruined corridors, Valdor realises the true nature of the enemy they face. I began to understand the true nature of what we were set against. The Priest King was just a shard cut from Dark Crystal, a mere sliver of a greater abomination. I could breathe it in, there. I could taste its essence, like wormwood on my tongue. On some days, even now, I can still taste it. The greatest of the many chambers was, by then, lost to us. Its interior was aflame, its great vials broken. I looked inside, just for a split second, and saw twenty vessels robbed of their contents, with lightning still snapping from vein to vein. So while not witness to the exact events, it's certainly implied by Valdor's faults that again the great enemy is responsible, the gods of chaos. Now again, whether you believe the Emperor allowed it or not is down to you, but this all brings us to the Siege of Terror and the novel Saturnine. And if you haven't read it, spoiler warning again, go read it, then come back. You really do want to read this for yourself first. But assuming you've done that, this novel introduces us to the character of Erda, a perpetual. And now being completely honest, I've never been a big fan of the perpetuals. Their storylines have always seemed a bit unnecessary for me, making things a bit more complex than they need to. But Erda is described in a meeting with John Grammaticus as radiantly beautiful and an extremely powerful psyker. And it's here things are taken in a very surprising direction. You helped him build it, said John. You gave him his damn children. I love my sons, she said. All of them. Even now. When I saw how things would go, I tried to stop it. The inexorable slide. I tried to make him see. But there was no reasoning with him. There never has been. So Erda is revealed as the mother of the Primarchs, one of the many Perpetuals who have followed the Emperor throughout history. Erda remained with the Emperor during the creation of the Primarchs, using not only her skills as a geneticist, but being the female gene donor, the surrogate mother to the Primarchs if you will. And just think how differently the Primarchs lives could have been had they not been scattered and were raised with their mother. But that was the extent of her involvement allowed with her sons by the Emperor. And once they were born, she began to understand the future in store for them, these generals of war. And this is where we get the real kicker. This part I know, Eldred told me, you didn't just step away, Erda. You tried to stop him. I tried to save my sons. You scattered them. She sat forward, 
and stared at the ground, her hands across her mouth. I did. I took them from him. I cast them onto the tides to spare them from his terrible ambition. So, according to Erda, she caused the scattering. It wasn't the Chaos Gods after all, but Erda, the Primarch's own mother. And obvious disclaimer here, all the novels are written from certain perspectives, so this could just be Erda's opinion or recollection, and it could be revealed to have been part of a grander plan. That perhaps she was manipulated by the ruinous powers, we don't yet know. But, it has to be said, it certainly doesn't read that way. It reads very matter of fact, that Erda caused the scattering. And honestly, this is a bit of a huge letdown for me. If this is revealed to be truly the case, or if we never hear anything more of it, after 30 years of chaos scattering the Primarchs, of it being integral to the mystery of the Primarch's journey and their resultant fall, that element of doubt of was chaos involved in the Emperor's plan, it's revealed that no, that didn't happen. It was Erda, who suddenly realised she wasn't happy with the Primarchs leading a crusade and the future the Emperor had in store for them. It just seems a bit too forced for me. And the reasoning is kind of weak. Really, you hadn't learnt what the Emperor was like by then? You didn't really understand his plans and intentions for the Primarchs? But like I said, being honest, I'm not personally a big fan of the perpetual storylines anyway so I most likely wasn't going to like this kind of revelation no matter what. But it does raise the interesting question of do we need all the questions answered, all the mysteries explained? It's a bit like should you ever meet your hero? Can you always be satisfied? It's certainly an interesting question. Now, is that it? The truth of the scattering revealed and case closed? Or could we indeed see that Erda is part of the larger picture? That she was indeed influenced by the forces of the ruinous powers? Or that she's been in league with them all along? I certainly hope so, because as big a fan as I am of the human aspects of the stories, as you guys all well know, Erda causing the scattering doesn't have the impact it needs. Maybe if the character had been around longer within the lore, maybe it's just the sudden inclusion of her. Of, hi, I'm the Primarch's mum. Oh, by the way, I caused the scattering too. If it was from a character who had been around longer, such as, say, Malkador, not the mum part, obviously, because that's a whole other storyline. But the scattering? Now that would have earth-shattering vibrations because he has been there from the very beginning. Everybody knows Malkador, and I'm not saying he should have, because I would have hated that storyline, but it's just an example of the impact the reveal of the scattering needs, or at least should have had to me. For me, Erda doesn't have that, and hopefully, like I said, it gets linked back to chaos somehow. At least that's what I would like. But the question is, what do you guys think? Do you believe Erda? Do you like her introduction? Do you think Chaos is still ultimately behind it? And should they be? And do you want them to be? Or do you think it works better for it all to have been undone by a simple act of humanity by Erda, the mother of the Primarchs? As always guys, leave your thoughts in the comments below. I am really interested to see what you think about this one. Huge thank you to all of my subscribers. Your support really means a lot to me. It truly does. And if you're new, please consider subscribing to help the channel grow. And if you enjoyed this particular vid, then why not drop a like on it too. But with that said, I am off and I'll see you all again real soon.